Hello, what's up guys? Robo here and um, today I'm just going to be bringing you one of the tutorials that was requested and it's basically going through how to make the image in the update video. Um, it's all based on shading <coughs> using gradients and like overlays and um, inner glows, shadows and stuff like that. And um, I just picked out a few examples that are basically, uh, they use it quite a lot to get a really nice effect. So if you watch Evan Eckhard's video here, um, recreating the prestige emblems, you can see that, well, it's more around here, but um, there's a lot, there's a black overlay here to create the shadow and a white overlay to create a sort of reflection on the other side. And um, also I found this kind of logo thing the other day. And I think this is made in Photoshop, I'm hundred percent sure. But um, the reflections and shadows kind of stand out a lot. So I thought I would just share my semi-built-up knowledge with you. Um, so here's a text one. Um, this is the same font I used in the update video. If any of you haven't seen that, I can probably try and find it for you quickly. Um, yeah, here we go. Okay, so this is the um, update image, which didn't really take that long to do. Um, yeah, so I'm going to get straight into it. What you want to do is first rasterize the text. You want to have it a color though. You can't have it, well you can do it gray I guess, but it won't be as good an effect. So I'd go with either green or orange or something like that. A bright color usually works. Okay, so now what you want to do is um, you want to sort of assess how you're going to break it up. Like with the update, um, I linked a D and a P. And here you could link a G and an O I guess, but your text is probably going to be different because there's not really much point doing it on this. And you want to um, zoom in and I've decided I'm going to fold the L over. So you want to select your um, polygonal lasso tool and just click under the top or wherever you want to fold it. If you hold down shift to make it a nice straight line, drag it down like that, drag it up and round and select the top of the L. You want to right click on the selection and click layer via cut. And you'll see that creates a new gradient, but not to worry, we'll sort that out in a bit. And then go to Control or Command T and rotate 180 degrees. And then just drag that down so it looks like it's been folded over like that. Okay, so now what we want to do is I'm just going to go to Gradient Overlay and take that off. And select Color Overlay and just select an orange at the top here. It doesn't really matter what kind of orange. I'm going to make it a bit brighter. There we go. And select OK. And now you want to create a layer in between these two layers. And get your brush. You want to bring hardness down to make it a soft brush, right to zero. And make your brush just, that's about perfect size, I'd say. So um, do it to scale to that and just click underneath to create a sort of shadow like that. And it doesn't matter because we're going to delete the unwanted stuff. So if you just control or command click on your text thumbnail, you should make a selection like that. Right click, click select inverse, and then just hit delete. And um, anything that's left, you can just clear up with a hard brush. So bring the hardness up and the size down, like so. You think that um, that shadow isn't like deep enough, you can always duplicate the layer and um, to make it a bit a bit more, well, a bit stronger. And um, as you can see, that looks like a nice fold over, but if you, you can add more effects to that. So for example, you need to assess where the light's gonna be coming from. So if we create a quick new layer, this isn't necessary at all. Um, I'm gonna say the light's coming from that direction. And if you want to um, get a soft brush again, a bit smaller this time, and just create a sort of a little glow here and just set blend mode to overlay. Um, you can also do the same with a dark soft brush, create a new layer. I always create new layers for black and white overlays because they overlay different. And then just go to soft light. And then if you just control or command click on the folded bit, go to right click, select inverse, and then delete the black from there. Deselect. You've got a really nice effect now on the folded over bit there. And 
I'm just going to erase the light, so to speak. Um, Okay, so there we go. So we got a nice light effect sometimes also. Um, I apply a bevel and emboss set, setting, size zero, depth all the way up, and I just take off the black and set the blend mode to overlay for the white. And sometimes you can increase the um, black a little bit. Okay, so there we go. Um, that's pretty much how you can make a nice fold in Photoshop. Um, I'm not gonna go too much into all the other letters today. Just because time-wise this is a tutorial and once you've got one kind of effect you can basically do all of them. Um, what I am going to do is quickly layer this one from the rest. I guess there now. That'll do. Okay, layer by cut and I'm just going to drag it over the G but keep it on its level with all the others. Okay, so now what you can do is you just add a simple outer glow and um, decrease the opacity, increase the spread and then add a bevel and emboss depth all the way up and um, just add a sort of inner glow <coughs> I've already used inner glow so I'm going to use overlay and just make it white increase the size of it, distance down and yeah it's pretty it's not really too hard to make sort of nice effects using the layer styles and gradients so it's just up to your imagination really where you can use the effect I'll just put that on there it looks a little Alright, there we go, just as a simple effect. Um, it's just up to your imagination where you can create the folds and link letters. This perhaps wasn't the best example for linking letters, but you know, um, what you could do, which I just thought of, but I won't go into it in too much detail, is if you create a new layer, come down here and you see where the G goes up to the other G. Um, what you could do is just Create a nice soft black gradient here. Um, so I'm going to go with 50 and just select inverse and delete. Like that. And then if you um, if you select the part of the G that wasn't selected before, so just go down the same along the line like that and move it over. And then you get a white brush because you can do exactly the same there just to give that a whitened effect like so and that obviously you'd have to spend a bit more time on that to make it look good but it's all about knowing where to put the the gradients really okay so now I'm going to hide the text layer and I'm going to open up this sphere which I did earlier you can also use this effect on um, shapes, just like I showed in the example. You kind of want to um, see where the shadows are going to be and the um, the highlights, that's the word I'm looking for. So if I take this step by step, I took a normal sphere and I've just added a simple gradient on which I had to rasterize just to make it... I don't know why I did that, it's not necessary, but I did. Um, and I use the opacity 11 on black with a size 140 shadow just to give it more of a gradient and then this was a simple shadow that I added so first of all I just added if you get your elliptical marquee tool drag this up create a new layer and then add a larger white brush so I'm going to go with about 700 or you could do that doesn't really make a difference and then I'm just going to click overlay 
or soft light. No, it actually gives quite a nice effect. That's like a giant red button or something. And then if I click this one, I've, I added another shadow, which was just a general white shadow on this half of the screen here. Can't see what I'm doing because it's... Yeah, so I added a white shadow over here and I added a black shadow over here, but they were on different layers because if I go overlay, now the white looks all right there, but the black sort of, it's a bit too dark, a bit too much saturation there, so I'm just going to lower the opacity to about 50, so you can't really see the white anymore, but I think that's perfect for the black. And then I added, on top of that, a a more um, a harder brush, sort of, to create more of a in-depth shadow, and then I did the same with a white brush on the other side here. So that's created a sort of 3D sphere, if you like. Um, and it's a great effect to apply to shapes and text in Photoshop to make 2D look a bit more interesting. And yeah, so that's pretty much that for the um, gradients and shading. Now, if I was to create a new layer and just merge sphere, that's not going to work so well. Um, if I just create a sphere, select inverse, and then delete that because it's not going so well. Now if I merge all the layers together, that should look better. Um, what you've got on this side is a dodge and a burn tool. Dodge makes things, um, it will highlight the highlights more. So if you get a hard brush and you sort of want to go where the light is, um, you can adjust your exposure too. And I'm going to make a really large brush and just go on that side. And if you do the same with your burn tool, um, create a really large brush and just go on this side. Now that's sort of exaggerated the effects, but you get what I mean. You can use that as well to um, really give some great effects. So that's pretty much that for the tutorial, guys. If you um, if there's any questions I didn't answer then leave a comment in the description, um, in the comments, and I'll see if I can answer it uh, through text. So, yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.